Welcome to day two of Municon 2021. My name is Amanda Mars. I work for the Department of Ecology and I will be moderating the Washington State funded stormwater retrofits looking back presentation by Dave Mora and Heather Barnes Loza who are two stormwater grant managers also with the Department of Ecology. There should be time at the end of the presentation for Q&A with the speakers. So please feel free to type your questions in the chat box during the presentation. And with that, I will turn things over to our presenters, Dave and Heather. All right. Um, thanks for allowing us to speak today here at MuniCon. And thank you, Amanda. Uh, our overall message that we want to want to make clear is from our observations of looking at um, projects constructed in the past over several year period, we can report that mostly the projects are being well maintained and are, are looking pretty good. And though we have found some issues uh, that we've raised to municipalities, they've been quick to respond and, and get on those. Next slide. This graphic is intended to illustrate a couple points. Uh, again, by and large, after going and looking at many, many projects, we found that um, the goods far outweigh the negatives that we've seen, that things are looking pretty good. Um, but it, it's a little blurry because some of the projects have just been constructed and uh, we have started looking closer at issues, but five out of six times, um, the projects are looking pretty good from a little blurry image. Next slide. And if we look at them closer, they still look pretty good. Two out of three times, we're not seeing issues. Um, and, um, you know, that's kind of more realistic looking at more closely at projects and as the projects get it up to be five years or older, uh, but they are being well maintained. Next slide. Our data set that we've looked at or we're gathering together, um, so, so far we have in our data set over a hundred stormwater projects, uh, facility grant projects, over a thousand stormwater BMPs, facility BMPs, um, actually over 1500 if you start counting dry wells and, and uh, infiltration trenches. Since 1989 through the present Department of Ecology, um, through the state of Washington funding has constructed or through municipalities have built over $140 million worth of stormwater facility infrastructure projects. This database so far contains about 60 million of that. Um, next slide. A little breakdown here. Again, um, over a hundred stormwater projects. There we go. Um, and we have mapped out the footprints of those mapped out 94 contributing areas, the basins that drain, drain to those BMPs, um, 35 types of stormwater uh, facilities. And our observation data set consists of over 1,700 site visit observations of various BMPs. Um, the frequency of the type of installations that we have uh, by, and by, by a large margin, dry wells and infiltration trenches are the most common thing installed, followed by bioretention facilities and permeable pavements. I should point out, though, that the total amount of acreage for the permeable pavement service is about 25 acres. So there's a lot of smaller types of facilities that have been installed. Um, and then followed by that are a variety of tape devices. Um, so those, those are the most common installations that we have in our data set. Next slide. Okay, our site visit observation data set. Um, this slide is intended to illustrate overall the where we've looked at projects and have site visit observations. Initially, our data collection focused on whether or not BNPs were funded uh, by project we were looking to, I was looking when I initially started collecting data in 2014, was just to have a, a GIS data layer that showed the BMP footprints and listed a checkbox on 
whether or not the, that I'd gone out and looked at the project and had a documentation to neatly show where the thing was completed at. Um, but then we started seeing, even at the end of project completion, some, some design issues that were coming up, things that had to be fixed before we could check on, off on them. And then over the years, again, I started in 2013, 2014, uh, some patterns started to emerge um, and started looking at maintenance issues of um, things that came up again and again and kind of put them in, in little boxes. Next slide. So when we're looking at site, site, our site visit observations, and we'll talk a little bit about the collector anymore, as you zoom in, you get more and more resolution regarding the location of, of, of your site visits. In this case, this one helps illustrate your observations relative to contributing areas which are the pink boxes there. Next slide. And then ultimately you get down into the BMP level. This is a permeable pavement and relative to where that permeable pavement is, is where, where we put our, our uh, check boxes or our observation boxes. Um, we're using a cell phone app. So the G GIS GPS is, isn't totally accurate. It's, it's a better reflection to uh, put the uh, observation relative to the position of the, the, the BMP footprint that's mapped. Next slide. So the primary tool we use for collecting data is a collector, um, an ArcGIS application where feature services are pu published online that the application has access to. So that would help guide us to where the contributing areas are, the contributing basins for each BMP, as well as the footprint of the BMP. And then out in the field, you make the site visit observations using the app. app. Um, um, and we'll talk a, a bit about the top types of site observations you can make on the next slide. Again, the the one type of observation is you went out to the project, project complete, completion and verified that, that the thing that was supposed to be built was built, completed or not. Other types of observations though would include types of maintenance issues. And although there are many types of maintenance issues as identified in the stormwater manual maintenance standards, um, I've genericized this for the purpose of, of being able to add things up and look at it Initially, we had built feature service layers for several types of BMPs, but a generalized version of conditions seemed to be more telling for this type of, of analysis. Um, a little discussion about each type of thing, just to give you a feel for what, what we thought. I'm not gonna go into great detail about how we interpreted each type of these conditions, but inland outlet was generally something that's being blocked um, by sediment or whatever, or an object in the road. Erosion issues, you know, uh, swales being eroded away, sediment buildup, bioretention facility where the ponding capacity is, is getting reduced. Um, sometimes this, this is due to sediment being built up, but I, sometimes I think it's being due, due to gardening practices where uh, mulch is accumulated and is reducing the, the, the ponding capacity of the bioretention facilities. Vegetation could be a number of things. Permeability issue is, uh, the infiltration test or could be ponding uh, after uh, days after a rain event. Uh, excessive loading is, is interpreted to be things like track out, but it could also be um, excessive water draining into a facility from, a, a, you know, from the street that doesn't quit after it rains. And filter issues are generally things like um, cartridge uh, tape devices, that uh, are showing signs of slowing down or sediment buildup in the, in the bulb. Design issues, um, by and large, what we're talking about here, um, the most typical type of thing um, after it's constructed at any rate, is that we, we observe that the BMP is not at the low spot or the, the conveyance is disrupted um, somehow. So the BMP is not getting water. Next slide rainwater, stormwater. A few quick examples of times when we've seen this thing, the upper left just shows, uh, and the bottom part of the, you can't see in the graph, but the bottom part shows the rain, the previous day's rain events, but 
Um, the other type of observation you can when you're going out, as you mentioned, is photographs. You add photographs to your observations. Um, you don't always do that, but that's typical. But in the upper left the, is, is showing an issue where it had been raining. We went out there and looked at a, a, an older project or a project and, and noted that water wasn't draining into the inlet. Um, the municipality saw this at the same time we did and, and they, they fixed it. Another type of observation might be something like, um, is ponding lasting too long on the one on the right? Is ponding lasting too, too long after a rain event? Um, we saw something that looked a little suspicious, but rain is localized. So even though we had rain data, it may have well have rained more at the site. And we haven't, we haven't seen uh, ponding at that BMP since then. On the lower left is another example of a, an issue that we observed. Um, and uh, in this case, the tree was gone from the Filtera, but also underneath it, um, there was ponding on top on the ponding on the surface of the Filtera. So it was it was becoming um, there was an infiltration issue there. Uh, and so on the lower right is a little per uh, pervious pavement. I'm telling them which word is going to come out of my mouth when I say it, but but um, that issue. Uh, what we found is. Uh, sometimes things look pretty bad because there's moss and stuff built up on them and it actually the, they turn out to pass permeability test, infiltration test. Uh, so um, we make the observation, it looks like it might be, but it really, a lot of times it's turned out they are doing okay, at least to a 10 inch per hour standard. Uh, they're not doing hundreds of inches an hour anymore. And the last slide is just intended to show that, our last corner there is intended to show that Occasionally, we might get think we've got the best photograph, but because of our cell phone, um, we can't actually see the photos sometimes when it's bright and sunny out. Um, so this is just a picture of me taking a picture of my thumb. Anyway, next slide. Okay, so I showed that first slide at the very beginning, and I wanted to make sure we capture capture the big picture issue is that by and large, when we look at all the site visit observations, um, five out of six times out of 600 BMPs observed, well, about 450, 500, mm -hmm. almost 500, um, no maintenance issues observed. And of those 600 BMPs observed, um, 135 times issues were observed. And 18 times we considered the, the maintenance issue to be significant enough that that uh, it should be, we should raise the attention if it can be fixed um, to the municipalities through our permit managers. Um, and like I said, uh, they've been very receptive to wanting to know when their BMPs are having issues. So that hasn't really been an issue. Um, next slide. And the second slide I showed said, hey, when we started looking things a little closer, for instance, we started doing actual infiltration tests um, and started bringing out buckets of water with us to, because it doesn't always rain conveniently to see where the drainage was headed or not headed. We started seeing more issues than we had observed before. And also the projects are getting older. Um, the last three, three years of data though shows that, and that uh, sometimes our ability to go out and look at projects changes. So for instance, in, 2020 COVID came along, but not only that, how many people do you have on staff, uh, stormwater grant managers that are available to go out and do site visits? That changes as well from, and it uh, takes a while to get people up and out and so on. And then, uh, but Heather and I were very productive in 2021 this winter, um, having looked at 33 projects um, and um, 188 BMPs we observed, stormwater facilities. And by and large, no, no issues with a large majority of them. We did find some issues, maybe one in three, one in four. And we identified um, 13, 13, 13 things that we considered to be fails. Of the fails that we observed, um, four of them were permeability issues where they failed infiltration test. Um, one was ponding that was caused by uh, base flows draining down a hillside. And one was caused uh, by apparent insufficient depth to groundwater. It's groundwater. Groundwater is leaching into the, to the bioretention cell. And 
there were eight instances where flow did not was not directed to the BMP. This could have been caused from the very beginning, or it could have been the road surface had changed and, and uh, no one noticed that that needed to be addressed when they were doing the road work. Um, I think Heather, you're next, right? Oh, oh one more slide I forgot. Um, so this, looking at the numbers by the frequency of types of issues, this, this slide here is uh, basically gives you a feel for of the range of the things I talked about, the types of things that we're seeing. Note that for this, this slide here, this type of statistic that we can pout, the same BMP might have more than one issue with it. And I think now I'm introducing Heather. All right, hopefully you guys can hear me okay. Um, Dave, give me a wave if you can't. Uh, but Dave spent some time there going through the data we've been able to collect in Collector and manage in ArcGIS. Um, I wanted to spend the last little bit here just looking at some photos of what we've been able to see and kind of how we've been able to use photos over time. Uh, it's important to remember that we aren't inspectors. Um, we're grant staff. Uh, our ultimate goal is to see how the projects that Ecology Funding has put on, helped put on the ground are doing. Um, and that means the data we're gathering are opportunistic. So do please keep that in mind. Um, we don't have a regimen of BMPs. We're going out and photographing it every year. Uh, kind of thing. But it has been interesting. It has been very informative. Uh, also keep in mind, as Dave said, we are taking pictures on a phone in an application. And so we don't always get um, photos that are going to win a photography award. Uh, this, this slide here is a pretty good example. This photo is from 2015, right after project completion. Not super helpful, pretty dark. And then unfortunately, our photo from this year turned out not that great too. Um, and that is one where we noted issues with vegetation. So it is a learning curve, we're getting better at it and it's a tool we'll, we'll continue to use and, and get a lot out of. Uh, when pictures turn out well though, it's a really nice record of just how things have changed over time from 2016 to 2021. We've got a nice image of how vegetation has been established, how maybe weeds have encroached, and a look at how maintenance is going. Um, so the photos can be very useful and we're learning how to use them better and better as we go along. Uh, this is another good example. We've got 2019 to 2021. We can see how the vegetation has progressed, unchanged. And we can also look for things like signs of ponding while we're out there and check in with inlet or outlet, outlet issues and kind of just see how things, are, how things are going and keep a photo record of how they change over time. Sometimes they don't change much at all. Uh, this pictures here on the side show a BMP that has pretty much stayed the same, um, which is kind of nice. The plants have stayed as they were designed and we're not seeing any issues with the inlet or outlet. And the photo here on the right, um, is a good example of us being able to see that, hey, these have been recently maintained and they're still looking pretty good. Um, it is important to note that we too were able to get out mostly in the spring and the winter. Um, come the summer, we are working on scoring grants and doing other parts of uh, grant management. So some of our data is definitely skewed seasonally. Um, but it, we're maybe some of the only people who hope it rains when we're going outside. Um, Again, it, our visits are opportunistic. This is a BMP we've been able to go to a lot just because of proximity. Uh, these photos here on the left uh, were shortly after completion, right after the project came online. And we were able to go back out in June and see that the plants hadn't really established themselves and they might need some assistance to really get established within the BMP. We were able to keep going out, however, and by February, we can see that plants are established. And by June, we can definitely see that the plants are well established, but there may be some undesirable plants in there as well. And then come 2021 in February, we've got a lot of plant material. Um, we can also see that this may or may not be before a scheduled maintenance. Uh, so we keep that in mind, but a lot of how well this BMP will perform will depend upon how those plants are maintained. So it's good to see that. And um, it's also important to note that we didn't see signs of failure, what we consider massive maintenance issues with it, even though it was clearly still needing maintained. 
Um, as Dave said, we've come up on some issues. Uh, this is an example where we reached out with the municipality or will be reaching out for the, with the municipality to work with them. Um, you can see on one side of the street, uh, we had a dead tree in a filtera and we suspect it's from excessive loading and track out in the area. This is a photo of sediment at the base of the tree kind of building up. And this is on the same side of the street, um, which may have been from construction. Um, so this is an example where we would reach out to someone and say, hey, this is what we've observed. We just wanted to check in um, and maybe work with our permit managers. And then on the other side of the street, we've got a tree in a filtera doing, doing well. So this is just one we would, we'd wanna talk to somebody about. Um, a couple other issues we've seen, um, we have started doing some infiltration testing. So we've got, we've seen, a, as Dave mentioned, a couple instances of slow infiltration. Um, I bring up this one that Dave has already shown. I think it's a really good example of a design issue where we were able to work with the municipality and it has since been fixed. Um, and there aren't any problems with that BMP that we've observed. Um, Filteras sometimes lose their trees. And then this one over here to the right, we saw in March, this is one of the ones Dave was talking about. We suspect there may be a base flow issue as there was a buildup of ponding. It's a little bit hard to see, um, but there was ponding there that was not supposed to be there. Uh, so th those are some of the issues we've run into. Um, this year has been kind of fun. We've been trying to observe some things that we haven't really been able to go take photos of in the past. Uh, one example is permeable pavement. Um, we have a lot of permeable pavement, uh, but you can't really tell what's happening with a permeable pavement just by looking at it or just by taking a photo. So we've started doing some um, sort of pass-fail infiltration tests, which has been very informative. Um, in general, we see that they're functioning even when they slow down, they're still infiltrating. Um, it's also hard for us to go out and take pictures of tape devices uh, with the canisters and, and things. And we've found that we can take our cameras and put them right on the hole in that uh, manhole cover. And we can just do a quick look and see, this is a kind of a weird photo, but we can tell just by doing that, that there isn't a bunch of sedi sediment built up on the, on the canisters and that things seem to be functioning well at, at a first glance. Um, overall, we really want to leave you guys with the message that, no, we haven't been able to do a randomized sweep of BMPs, but we have been out and we wanted to report kind of what we've seen and the overall message is that things, retrofits are functioning well on the ground and we're excited to see that and excited to keep going out and seeing how they function over time just so we can bring data back to the program. Uh, with that, uh, I guess just wanted to say thanks to all everybody on the stormwater team here at Ecology and to our GIS staff who's been super helpful um, with uh, the collector and with ArcGIS. And then absolutely, of course, to our grant and loan recipients who are out there getting things on the ground for us. It's, it's nice to see the retrofits in action. And I guess, yeah, if anyone has any questions, we'll happily take them. Fantastic. It looks like we do have time for questions and we did get a few. So I'll start with the first one. Let me scroll up here. First one from Jenny says, have you considered establishing photo points to help get better records? Uh, Dave, you're muted. This is a heads up. It's a great idea to turn the mute off before you start speaking. Um, and your idea is great too. So what we had been doing, and it created problems again because of our cell phone, you can't actually see the photos that we took before, is you, when you go out in the field, you can look at the photo and other information about a project with the collector. For instance, the, we have project summaries that you can read about the project when you go out and look at them. So we, with the idea was uh, we, we look at the photo and see a good picture and then try to walk around and try to match that picture, but your idea is a much better one. Pick a corner and and uh, have it identified as, as the location to look for something to match in, in, a, in a future date. So that's a good idea. Great, um, thanks. Moving on to the next one. It looks like um, there's a question about whether or not the data is publicly available, the data that you collected um, using Collector. Uh, 
I am sure it is publicly available. Uh, <laughs> so um, you'll have to contact us and figure out how to get it. We don't have it formalized available, but obviously I work for Department of Ecology. So anything that we collect is, is available. There's no, no secret, but we don't have a formal way to share it yet, but of course we can share it. And, it's and also, it's a work in progress. Um, we're working on it. There's a, uh, kind of a, what feels like kind of a constant push towards things like story maps. Um, so yeah, definitely work with us if you're interested. Um, there are just uh, some hoops we have to jump for things like um, getting it out there and officially published. So definitely a work in progress and definitely a goal. Great. Um, another question from Douglas says, did you have any access issues to these, these BMPs? I think a good answer to that is that could have skewed our data um, uh, somewhat. Um, for instance, looking at tape devices, we didn't actually we don't open up anybody's vault without having municipality there, I and mean, we have had municipalities voluntarily come with us to look at older projects and open up the vaults for us. Um, but um, I, I suppose the hardest ones to access would be things like without having the municipality there to walk us around would be some of the larger wetland facilities um, just to get around and, and closer. But uh, generally the BMPs for stormwater retrofits are, are building right of ways and things like that that we didn't have any trouble accessing. All right, that's good to hear. It looks like we're getting close to our time warning. Um, so maybe time for one more question. Um, checking vegetation as an issue, what does that mean? And how did you see vegetation as an indicator of success? Well, it, for instance, if it was filled in with weeds or the filter tree was dead, uh, it's kind of a generic description uh, that kind of indicated that it's an issue. Um, and fail anybody because of vegetation issues because, uh, I not say fail, but indicate a fail because it's assumed that they will get out and garden that thing, hopefully the spring sometime and, and, and get to it and hopefully mulching it down actually remove the plant material. Um, but um, I don't know, I'm glad to answer your question. There's probably a, a bunch of things. I should point out that we recommend that you actually take out the, main, the maintenance center with you and go out to refer to is, um, for each of the types of BMP, so you can more systematically make them sound more like the maintenance standard. Okay, so it looks like we do have a few more questions, but again, I don't want us to be cut off. So um, I think just to be safe, we will call this the end of our session. Thank you, Dave and Heather, for the interesting presentation. Thanks to all of the attendees for participating as well. And if you have additional questions, which there were a few, um, please feel free to contact the presenters directly. Their information can be found in the conference program. Thanks everyone. Thanks.